cool. She's with her in the bus. Okay, cool. Okay, it's happening here. No, I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous too. She must be so relieved that she's here now. People coming. People are coming, people are coming. Hatija! Hatija! Hey! <laughs> yeah, we were counting seven plus years. No, no, it's. Seven? Well, it's less than seven. It's it's, less than it seven. Will be seven in October. Yes, in October. I'm Khadija Ismailova. I'm a journalist. I'm based in Baku, Azerbaijan. I do investigative reporting. After seven years of travel ban, including the prison, I, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm breathing a little bit. For several years, I've been doing like easy journalism, but in 2005, uh, something happened. Uh, a colleague of mine, Elmar Hussainov, he was killed on the, at the doors of his house uh, and um, with five bullets in his mouth. And uh, that was a turning point. He was the only one who was uncovering the first family corrupt businesses and he paid for it an ultimate price. He, he lost his life, he, he was killed. charged me with uh, tax evasion, uh, embezzlement, and the charges were uh, driving to suicide. And it's amazing because these were all the crimes of the government that I have been writing about. So I spent a year and a half in jail. The camera in my bedroom had been actually placed there a few days after the first Panama story about, about President Aliyev's family business. It was mon several months later, in March 2012, uh, when I received a letter with a threat and uh, still shots from the footage from my bedroom. <clears throat> and the small note, behave or you will be defeated like whore, behave or you will be defamed. When you think that there was a camera and maybe there is a camera in your toilet, your body stops functioning. I went through this. For eight or nine days, I couldn't use toilet anywhere. I mean, even in public places, I couldn't use it. My body stopped functioning. When I saw the pictures, like, I had two choices, either be scared or be angry. So my anger was bigger than my fear. So basically what we have is list of phone numbers um, that were targeted in Azerbaijan. That's so cool. And yeah, so we have about 1,000 number from Azerbaijan mm -hmm. and you are among them. Oh. And then we also have some people who are your friends mm -hmm. and um, your lawyers. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like a lot of politicians. Okay. Um, and what does that program do? So what the program does is 
it basically without you knowing um, it, it it installs things on your phone and then it allows even if I didn't click on anything yes so the, the, the secrecy of this it's called Pegasus mm -hmm. and the secrecy of it is that you don't actually see or you you, you don't do anything so before you had this you had to click on something yeah. to be infected in this case it all happens in the background I, I I'm trying to find to remember like everything that I did with my phone, like, did I compromise anyone with uh, the information that I've been receiving or sending? That's, that's the most... It's, it's very scary. Yeah, it's scary. Because you use programs like Signal, Telegram, you think uh, things are in encrypted and so on, but then... They, they probably spent somewhere around $10 million on doing this on you as well. While charging you with the... <laughs> oh my... Yeah. I can show you. Um, so this is the... Um, I can, I'll show you the other people as well. Um, Holy cow. Oh, him too! Yeah, I know. <laughs> so they, they, they watch pro-government journalists too? Yes. So yeah. these are people we were able to verify. Yeah, the... Opposition party, he's the, uh, yeah, he's former political prisoner, but does really bad things now. So this is activist, Bakhtiar, his uh, conversations have also been uh, uh, published recently, Bakhtiar. So this one is pro-government editor now. His newspaper used to be opposition, but now. Uh, this one is like gender activist, lawyer. Ah, oh, this one is the guy who actually releases other people's stuff. Other people's stuff. I mean, it's scary. It's it's like there is no way that it it does any good to national security. So. These people are not a threat to national security. There is no, there is no reasonable cause for watching them because these people, like, they don't have access to any state secrets. They cannot give it to anyone. It's so why 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 it's bug them? for it's for blackmail purposes only. Now, like as I try to absorb this it's getting it's getting difficult i mean I, i'm trying to remember what i've been doing with the phone it's an incredible invasion of privacy yeah it's not just azerbaijan it's all over the place you know it's Shit. Uh, and this is why we're, we're doing this to try to stop this type of pra practices you know because this is bad 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 i need to smoke Is there any way to avoid this surveillance? On a phone, it's, it's um, you know, you're probably never going to be able to stop a phone. There'll always be some way, you know, to, to do it. But there are other ways to communicate yeah. securely. It's like... It makes you to want to live in the bubble, like so no one can enter, like in some sort of. But then, like living, like living in the inside the condom. But then you cannot reproduce. I've been told that one national security employee has built the house and had it equipped and he can he can watch my house from there so they're spending a lot of money on you yeah I, I, and i don't know why i mean i'm cooking so they they see my kitchen and i'm cooking several activists and journalists in azerbaijan had been subject to uh, private attacks well, every time we were thinking about that 
we've been recommending each other this tool or that tool, how to keep it more and more secure from the eyes of the government. And yesterday I realized that there is no way. It's, it's horrifying. It's, it's hard because like yesterday I've heard about it and all night I've been thinking about what did I send, what did I do with my phone? And I feel guilty. I feel guilty to, for the messages I've sent. I feel guilty for the sources who send me information thinking that some encrypted ways are secure. They did it and they didn't know that my phone is infected. I mean, my family members are also victimized. The sources are victimized. Everyone, I mean, people I've been working with, people who told me their private secrets are victimized. Everyone, I mean, it's not just me. I put so many people in danger. And, and I'm angry. I, Again, I'm angry. I'm angry with the government. I'm angry with the companies that produce all these tools and sell it to the bad guys, like Aliyev regime. It's 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 really it's despicable. It's heinous. <laughs>